Bana is very significant. Bana means arrow. The Bhakti Yoga system is just like an arrow aiming at the Supreme Personality of God. The Bhakti Yoga system never urges one towards the impersonal Brahmanic culture or to the path of Paramatma realization. The band, this bandha or arrow is a sharp and swift that it goes directly to the Supreme Personality of God penetrating the regions of impersonal Brahman and localized Brahman. Oh, the letter is so small. Will I exercise? <laughs> There's a great anxiousness in people in the world to understand yoga. It's like a magic world. And good so, because yoga means union. It means going all the way to the end. Even though some people don't know that in America they just had a major conflict. Because they made some studies, and in the studies, those who were doing yoga were doing so well that they were like less inclined to crime. Since they have a huge crime problem for use, so some people proposed why not introduce yoga into the schools? <laughs> Why not have the kids learn the yoga? <coughs> and actually, the American school system accepted. I don't know in how many states, but it accepted. So <coughs> we're training up yoga teachers so that in the, in the school kids could already learn exercises of yoga. Really amazing, no? But then they had the problem that. When you, you practice yoga, you often come about such polite things like Namaste. I greet the Divine within you. you know? Om, the truth. I Om. So the Christian fundamentalists, they said, hey, how's this? We are not having any more Christian prayers in school, but now they are saying Namaste and Om. In the yoga, what is this? Cannot tolerate. Then there was a discussion going on, is yoga religious or not? Believe it or not. <laughs> they were discussing, is yoga religious or not? And of course, some advocates of yoga in order to keep it in the schools or whatever, they say, no, it's not religion, nothing to do. So it, it's, it's, it's as good as saying, Religion has nothing to do with the religion. Because yoga means to unite with its original cause of existence. And religare is the origin of the, for, of the word religion, religare in Latin. It means to unite, to connect, to reconnect, religare. So actually, yoga and religion is the very same word, just in a different language. No? Are you going to pray in your yoga session? <laughs> well, nowadays, Christians even offer meditation uh, seminars. So the whole thing has gone, gone a little bit of <laughs> intermingling. No? I mean, last but least, the hell catch it. What is a mantra? It's a prayer. What is a prayer? It's a mantra. So do you want to change the mantra? No, I only pray. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how are you going to tear apart uh, the meaning and the and the word? 
He wants to divorce the, the word from its meaning and create a new meaning, but using the word because of its popularity. It's a kind of a cheating mentality is revealed in that. Because now, okay, I mean, yoga, fine! But who's going to define what is yoga? Well, the yoga scriptures, I guess, no? Patanjali, the, the yoga sutras, scriptures which exist about yoga thousands of years ago. Even in Harappa, Mojandaru, these old cultures, they had asanas there, right in their coins and things like this. The oldest, the oldest, and if you go to Mexico uh, and to, to Honduras, you find many of the figures, the statues, then yoga postures. Huh? So, yoga? <laughs> Who's going to define yoga? And then people say, yoga is gymnastics. No, yoga is not gymnastics. But what is yoga finally? So, Prabhupada is talking about the yoga systems, and uh, therefore we offer to Srila Prabhupada the system of inbound yoga. The system of inbound yoga is the yoga which definitely is to open the doors of your heart, to go deep inside and to find the beauty and the treasure which are there. Because the, the real inside of yours is mystical. The real outside of you is hair. Huh? Little hair is coming out of your body. <laughs> and so we we can say that hair is mystical as well because it comes from the body which is coming from the presence of the soul but to say i am this hair it's pretty ridiculous because they cut it and <laughs> then your hair is gone <laughs> so uh, the, the inbound yoga system it is focusing on the complete set up of the human necessities. It is actually approaching in a very bhakti yoga way that everything has connection, everything has meaning, and that we have to explore, we have to find that real meaning. That's our that's our our duty, our task. You know, we have a problem, we have to solve it, right? So, this body, in a way, is a problem because it grows old and becomes sick. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is, why, why do we not know why it was born to begin with? So, if you want to define something, it's like you have a car, maybe even a luxury car, but you never got the key. So, you got that thing sitting there in front of your house. Every time you pass by, you wonder, what is this car here for? Huh? What does it do? How can you use it? Well, and somebody says, no, but it's yours. <coughs> it's yours. That's nice. It's mine. But I don't know how to use it. They gave me the car, but they didn't give me the key. <laughs> so, uh, this is more or less like the human form of life without taking advantage of its interest and <laughs> capacity. <coughs> it can be spoiled. I mean, if you look at the senses, we are all sensual beings, sentient beings and sensual beings. So, what does it mean, the sensual? Our sensual aspect is so amazing that the senses can provide us simultaneously with great pleasure and with great pain. Hearing can be very pleasant and it can be terrifying, torturing. Seeing something nice, oh, look at this. 
But then if you have to look at a tiger running towards you, ready to devour you, then your eyesight is just giving you the alarming, alarming go for safety message, die for safety. <laughs> So how do we give the appropriate attention to this body that we can actually take advantage of? It? Well, that's the science of yoga. That's exactly what yoga is all about. To make you show what this body is for, what these senses are for. These senses are not to produce pleasure, and these senses are not to produce misery. But the senses are meant to teach you many, many lessons. Don't go too much this way, don't go too much this way. Go to the golden middle way, to the gold. No, but I thought the senses, they were just some elements of entertainment. Let's have it, let's party. And then you have no. This is very confusing. I'm lost in my world of sensual perceptions, sense gratifications. <coughs> running here, running there, and getting nowhere. So the inbound yoga system is really a pathfinder. It is to show people that definitely everything is about being in the trail towards the goal, but to be there where you are ready to step on. Some people, they don't practice Hatha Yoga, but they practice Inbound Yoga in a more intensive form. Actually, inbound means what's going on in the heart, and what's going on in the heart, that is the subject there is love. So that Hatha Yoga addresses, just like certain things, you know. I'll give you an example. I may be a doctor. As a matter of fact, I know many doctors who don't